so let's start our today's class so hello everyone this is lecture 17 on computer networks and in the previous lecture we were discussing distance vector routing so uh, we have an assumption that uh, every router has knowledge about all the neighbors okay rather has knowledge about all the routers in the network that means number of routers are how many and so on so that's how we have built the table <coughs> so routing table has three columns two coast and next so like this we have constructed table for a b c and d okay and uh, then uh, i have told you know see each and every router will share distance vector with all its neighbor parallelly okay so the, 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 what is distance vector this coast part is the distance vector so each router will share this with all the neighbors so in the first round first round we have completed in the previous lecture itself and finally we have got this table okay these are the table after first round table for d then it is for a then this is for c and this is for b now what i will do is i will copy paste this slide okay and uh, we will start with this uh, second round okay so let me copy this hmm. so what we are going to do is we will delete this this okay and we can do one more thing yeah actually <coughs> hmm. so we will simply change these values one three ten zero okay one three ten zero Next is zero two five one zero two five one, and here we have five three zero ten. Five, three, zero, and ten, and the last is two, zero, three, three, two, zero, three, three, A, B, B, A. Next, we have to change now. So five three zero ten B B C B B B C B and here double A B D and the last one is a B B D A B B D. Okay, so now we have completed the table. So this is the output of the first round. Okay, so let me clear all these things. okay now see this what we are going to do is so uh, as studied in the previous lecture we are going to uh, so d will get distance vector from c and a so from c what it will get five three zero ten this is from c and from a it will get zero two five one 
okay and uh, c to d is 1 sorry c to d is 11 okay and a to d a d is 1 so now d will make again again it's table so what we will get so now d table will be to post next so it will discard this table and it will make a new table so a b c d what will be the cost cost uh, to a from a uh, cost to a so it will be 0 plus 1 and 11 plus 5 which is smaller 1 so we'll get 1 next to b so 2 plus 1 3 and 11 plus 3 that is so which is smaller uh, 2 plus 1 3 so what is next a a so because from a we are getting that's when next will be a now to c 5 plus 1 6 and here 11 which is smaller 6 is smaller so it will be from a now 10 plus 11 21 and 1 plus 1 that is 2 so 2 is smaller so everywhere it will be a only okay so 1 3 6 2 this is our new values and these are from a only okay and it was obvious also why because cd cost is 11 and here none is 11 so obviously these will be ignored and everything will come from a only okay so next we will construct table for a a will get distance vector from b and d so what they are going to get i have repeated in the previous lecture also so this thing uh, no doubt this table has been uh, after constructing it this table has been discarded but everything is done parallelly see this i have told you in the previous lecture parallelly okay so for the round two round one table will be considered we are doing round two let me label it so this was round one round one is over okay round one was this now in the in now we are at round two round two okay so what we are doing in round two we have constructed table for d similarly we will construct table for a for constructing table uh, we will take distance vector from b and d so what we will get b and d distance vector please find out b is 2033 and d is this one old values okay please take the old values do not take the new values new values will come in uh, this this table will be considered for the round three okay it will not be considered for round one yes so in the previous lecture also i have repeated this again and again okay so now a b and a d distance a b distance is two a b distance is two and a d distance is one so now we will make a new table with two coast and next hmm. a b c d yes and uh, one more thing sorry for that d to d distance will be zero okay yeah i have constructed two but it will be zero and the next will be d only okay because obviously d to d distance is zero now i have made it two it is not two it is zero okay yes so same is here for a now for a so you will immediately say cost is zero next is a for a do not see these tables okay yes so now for b i will take it so two plus zero that is two three plus one that is four which is smaller two plus zero so you will take two and next will be b why b because from b we have got this idea for c 3 plus 2 that is 5 10 plus 1 that is 11 so 5 is smaller so we will take 5 and uh, next will be b only because from b you have got it for d 3 plus 2 5 and 1 plus 0 that is 1 so 1 we have got this idea from d so 0 2 5 1 is my final answer okay for the this is for a now c c will get table uh, actually i have done a small mistake here for d table will come from a c and b also i have not taken b table b table will be 2033 and uh, uh, distance is 7 
BD is 7. So anyhow, we will get this same answer because AD distance was 1. Uh, that's why. So we will take minimum of these three. Okay. Yes. And uh, here, uh, A will get table from D and B. So we have taken this and got the answer. For C, what we have to do? Uh, C will get table from D and B. So from D, what it will receive? 1, 3, 10, 0. And from B, it will receive 2, 0, 3, 3. For D, distance will be 11. That means CD distance is 11. And BD distance is 7. Okay. Yeah. So now finally, we will make the table to post next A, B, C, D. So we are counting for C now. So first of all, make this 0 and next is C. Then you will start A. 11 plus 1, 12. 7 plus 2, 9. So 9 is the answer. And we have got this information from B. For B, 7 plus 0, that is 7. 11 plus 3, that is 14. So 7 is the best answer. We have got this information from B. For D, 11 and 7 plus 3, 10. So 10. We have got this information from B only. Okay. So this is my final answer for C. Okay, now what about B? B will get distance vector from A, D and C. So from A, what it will get? The older one, 0, 2, 5, 1. From D, 1, 3, 10, 0. From C, 5, 3, 0, 10. So AD, AB distance, AB distance is 2. BD distance is 7 and uh, BC distance is 3. Okay, so now we will try to find the values. So 2, post and next. A, B, C, D. So we are talking about B. So we will first put 0. Then for A, 2 plus 0. 7 plus 8, 5 plus 3. So 2 is the minimum. We have got this idea from A. For C, 5 plus 2, 7, 17, and 3. So minimum is 3. From where? C. For D, 2 plus 1, 3, 7, and 13. So 3 is the minimum value from A. So 2, 0, 3, 3 is our final answer for B. So now, uh, this is round 2. Round 2 we have calculated. So now we will jump to round 3. Okay. You can take the snapshot. I will copy this slide. Done, sir. Okay. So we will copy this. And uh, now we are going to start round 3. So for round 3, what we are going to do, we will simply copy this. Uh, so 1360 and triple AD 1360 triple AD okay next 0251 A double BD 0251 A double BD so no change here okay no change for A for B 2033 A B C A so this is A, B, C, A. Oh, so it hardly matters. Okay. 2033 A, B, C, A. And for C. Uh, 97010. How we have got this for C? 53010 was there. So it is 53010. For C, na? Ah. Okay, so I think I have done a mistake here. CD and here it should be BC, na? Why I have taken this 7? It is 3. Uh, BC we have to take, na? Hmm. Because in each round value should decrease, it cannot increase. BC will be 3. 
Hmm. So now we will we will check this out. Uh, five. Yes. Five. And then we we will get three here. Uh, and uh, then we will get five three zero and uh, here we will get six and from b only so five three zero six double b c b five three zero six yes so finally we have got this this is our round two well round uh, two values now uh, so actually i should delete this i will duplicate it it was round two yeah yes yeah, so now everything is fine so for round three what we are going to do so same table will be exchanged again and we will try to calculate the values okay so Hmm. So what we have to do is D will get values from B and A. So now I think you can do it. Should I do it again and again? Actually, uh, I'm not well and I'm not able to concentrate on these numbers. No, sir. Don't do it, sir. We'll do it. I, I ha, so, yeah, yeah. So these are very simple things. They will simply exchange and you will find the minimum and put the value and get the answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and by the way, for in gate exam, if we get this small graph, generally they will give small graph, you need not apply DVR. By common sense, we can do it directly. Let me show you that also. So uh, let me show you that. So here itself, rather, I will show you. Okay. So here itself, I will show you. So for in gate, do not apply this technique. This is very lengthy. Okay. Yes, so hmm but but they will ask questions like in what will be the output in round three what will be the output in round two for that obviously we will have to apply this technique otherwise no need to apply i will tell you don't worry i will tell you how to uh, i will tell you how questions have been asked okay so by common sense now i will try to do it okay so uh, so for a b c d coast you by common sense you try to do it for d a from D, A minimum cost will be 1 and next will be A only. For B, see, from D to B it is 7. But from here mm -hmm. if we come, then it will be 3. And next will be A. Mm -hmm. For C, this is 11. And if we go via B, okay. it will be 10. But if we go via here, so 3, 2, 6, 1, 7. So mm -hmm. minimum is 7. Next is A. For D, 0. And next will be T only. Okay. So by common sense, we can fill this table. No need to apply rounds again and again and so on. Okay. So now here I will fill for A. For A to D, uh, for A to A, 0. Next will be A. For D, it will be 1. Next will be D only. For B, it will be 2. Next will be B only. For C, so 3 plus 2. 5 so you cannot get less than 5 okay because here we will get 11 plus 1 12 and so on so minimum is 5 and this is via b <coughs> okay so by common sense we can do this next is for c uh, so c to a minimum a will be 5 and cost will uh, and next will be b for c to b 3 and next will be B. C to C 0, next is C. C to D, again 3 plus 2 plus 1, that is 7, next will be B. Okay, and here, are you getting it now? These are very simple things. Uh -huh. So A, it will be 2 and next will be A only. Okay, and uh, for B it will be 0, next will be B. For C it will be 3, next will be C. For D, 2 plus 1 that is 3 and next will be A. That's it. We have constructed the table. So they can ask this if DVR is applied, what is the routing table for C, what is the routing table of B and so on. They can ask other questions also. Like they will say which path is never used. 
okay so, uh, so that means which edge is never used let me let me show you that also okay so they will ask these questions which edge is never used so you will simply say uh, in table of c everywhere we are going to either b or c we are never going to d so that means cd line is never used okay and in d also you can check this out in d also next is never c both ways you have to check now if cd line is never used so you have to check from c also from d also from d you will say that next is either a or d either a or d so that means here you are putting the traffic here you are not putting any traffic here so directly directly i want to say cd line is never used okay so i will simply say which line is never used cd any other line any other line so uh, d traffic is going to a c traffic is going to b okay and now from a you can check this out from a uh, uh, we are going to either uh, a or b or d so both lines are used from a now from b from b uh, a b c a is used b and c is used d is never used so bd is also never used okay so from the table itself you will check so first you will check the table of d you will come to know traffic is going to a or d it is not going to c so you will find that okay i think dc line is never used now from c also you will check and, and traffic is not going to d so you conclude that cd line is never used similarly uh, from a you will check for each and every router you have to check from a you will say traffic is going to a or b or d okay so uh, a every line is used from b you will say a b c so b a and c d is never there in the in the next part that means b, this bd line is never used so finally we have concluded that two edges are never used that is cd and bd okay now please do not say their uh, their length was maximum that's why we have taken that no it was by chance okay that is obviously if there is only one path between two routers then obviously you have to take that okay so for example uh, we have routers like this more technically we have done uh, graph theory now so this is cut edge so if this is a cut edge then obviously we have to use it there is no way out even if we have 50 okay hmm. so do not say this is was maximum it was by chance so sometimes it might be used <coughs> hmm. so this is all about dvr and now i will tell you few disadvantages of dvr okay so uh, take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay. hmm. so here number of routers were number of routers were four so number of rounds number of rounds needed will be 4 minus 1 that is 3 so generalize is number of router n the number of rounds needed will be n minus 1 why n minus 1 because min a smallest path see if we have n nodes so uh, like for example four nodes are there smallest path will contain how many edges three edges and in each round we are taking one one edges so in round one one edge path in round one one edge path is there in round two at most two edge path you can check this out so in round one directly connected we are just seeing the directly connected if they are not directly connected we have put values infinity you can check this out only one one edge in round one in round two we have taken two two edges or at most two two edges for so for example in round two a, a d we have taken now for d a is a cost is one so you have taken one length path and sometimes we have taken two length path also so for example d to c you can check this out d to c cost was mm, d to c cost is coming to be six via a no no actually uh, uh, it should be in round three because you are taking three edges now actually uh, mm, i uh, so i have told you now we have done small small mistakes here 
uh, so you can check that out uh, for round 2 answer will be 10 for c answer will be 10 okay why it will be 10 let me uh, let me show you uh, d d will receive from a b and c a b and c yes so c d cost a d cost and b d cost you have taken so c cost uh a a has given five but uh, this five was uh, updated value now so you have taken the previous value mm. actually uh, what we have done here zero two five one uh, so I have exchanged this table now zero two five one we have to exchange the previous one only round one answer was zero two five one how mm, okay yeah actually I have labeled uh, them wrongly this is round two round one was this only uh, the, the initial one was round one round two is this the, the table which we have got here okay and round three will be three three edges see this actually in round one directly connected whatever is directly connected this was the round one yeah. okay ha, this is round one let me label it properly this is round one because uh, one one uh, one one edges this is round two in round two we have taken at most two two edges so see this c path 10 uh, see this from d uh, tab table of d when we were making so we, for, for c we have got the path 10 why 10 because 7 plus 3 10 see this yes, 7 yes, plus 3 10 okay so for round 2 so, uh, from d to c we have got 10 why because you are including at most two two edges okay in round 3 this is round 3 actually we have done it is round. Uh, it is round one only, no, sir. Actually, this we one. Got, huh, which we already did in the previous class. Uh, no, no. Initially, this is the round one. Uh, where we have infinity and somewhere like this. Okay. Only mm -hmm. one one edge. Okay, this is round one. Uh, round one means one edge. Hmm. One edge path. So A to C, there is no one edge path. That means A to C, we have put infinity. Yes, sir okay uh, so this is round one round two which we have done in the previous class that was round two okay so this uh, i think we have done in the previous class and we have got these values uh, and round two means round two means uh, two edges okay at mm. most two edges you can take mm. at most two edges that is round two Okay, and we, we can check this out. See this for C path was coming to be 10. Why 10? 7 plus 3, 10. No doubt there is also one minimum path, but we are not taking that because it needs three edges and it will come in round three. Okay. Uh, so now uh, uh, finally we have got this. This is round three. Okay. This is round three. And we have to done till round three only and finally we have got these values these are the most updated values which we have got okay mm. ah, and uh, yeah so finally what i was saying is so a uh, number of routers is four the number of rounds is four minus one that is three so number of router n and then number of rounds will be n minus one one less why one less because there are four routers the number of edges will be at most three now smallest path will contain edges at most three okay so we can get two edges also for example there is a path like this we can get one edge also for example they are directly connected okay so whatever is the minimum we will take that yes. okay so you can take the best example is uh, this one c to d one edge was 11 two edge was 10 and the three edge path is uh, three plus two six or seven okay 
Ah, so we have taken this minimum. So this minimum will come in third round because in first round you will take directly connected. In the second round you will take at most two edges. In the third round you will take at most three edges. So there's one correction, sir. Uh, three plus two plus one is six, sir. Ah, sorry, six. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, yes. uh, so in uh, D table for C it will be six. Yes, sir. And similarly in C table. For D, it will be six. Yes, sir. Both ways we will do. Mm. Okay. So I, I hope you have. Ha. Please come again. The third round result which we did today, it is matching to that sir actually. Ha 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 ha. So th this is final round. So yes. Ha. So th this is matching uh, mm -hmm. because only three rounds we need, na? That's yes, why. Sir. Ha. ha. Okay, so round one, I am repeating again. If anybody is facing any difficulty, this was round one. Okay, uh, this was round one. That means only one edge included. So directly connected, then we will put the value. If not directly connected, we will say infinity. That is round one. Mm -hmm. Round two, they will exchange the distance vector and calculate the minimum cost and all. They we will get round two. So at most two edges are included. In round three, at most three edges are included. We do not need round four because four edges we do not want. Yes. Okay, because there are four routers only, so four edges we do not want. We want at most three edges only. Hmm. Okay, ha. Uh, so this is the basic idea. Yeah. So, uh, so disadvantage is that it need a n minus one rounds only. Only then we will get final answer. So this uh, uh, convergence convergence process is very slow. Convergence process means final table, whatever we are getting, that is very slow. It is not fast, na. So we have to follow n minus one rounds. Okay, let me uh, take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what they will say? So disadvantage is. We have to. Give n minus one rounds to get final table. Final tables, okay. So final tables we need n minus one rounds. Lesser than that, that is not possible, okay. So n minus one rounds we definitely need. Okay. So now I will tell you the gate questions. What they what they have asked? Very simple question. See this. So they will give you some routers, say N five, N four, N two, N three, N one. This is one, three, four, two, six. Okay. So uh, they will give you distance vector. So one type of question is uh, they will miss one of the distance vector. So you have to fill them. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So I will copy this out. So first of all, they can say you fill these distance vectors. So by default, you will fill. So now they have done small, uh, you can say uh, concise way. Two cost next. We have made three uh, three column table. Two cost next. They are giving just one column. So one column means distance vector only. That means this part only. They just want. So no, so no need to make next and so on. You just simply fill the values. So first of all, they will give you. So they will fill. Uh, Two three distance vector and they will say fill the remaining two and so on. So by common sense you can fill. For example, for n five I will fill for n five to n one. What is the minimum cost? Three plus one that is five. See, you have to uh, now see the beauty for this graph. I will say for uh, to reach n one you have to reach first n two. So for from n five you try to reach n two in the minimum cost. That is only three. There is no other possibility. So three plus one that is four. Yes. Okay. Ah, for n two, obviously three, n three, n three. So four plus two that is six, and uh, three plus six that is nine. nine. So obviously four plus two six is the minimum. Yes, sir. For n four, ah, uh, four is the minimum value. Yeah. For n five, it will be zero. Zero. 
for n4 uh, so uh, n1 n1 6 plus 2 8 or 4 plus 3 7 so 4 plus 3 7 is minimum to reach n2 then plus 1 that is 8 uh, then for n2 4 plus 3 7 yes, for n3 2 for n4 0, 0. n5 4 for n3 uh, n1 uh, 6 plus 1 7 and from here it will be more now so only one way 6 plus 1 7 6, n2 6 n3 0 n4 2 n5 6 hmm. for n2 n1 is 1 n2 is 0 n3 is uh, yeah 6 and 4 4 plus 3 7 6 plus 2 8 7 is the minimum mm. and uh, for n5 3. 3 so are you getting it a uh, very simple I'm question they are going to ask okay uh, for, uh. for n1 it will be 0 one. okay and, and now see the beauty now what i will say uh, so n1 and n2 are connected now nah? so n1 can reach everybody via n2 only there is no way out mm -hmm. so directly directly copy paste n2 table and do plus one. Oh, all right yes sir. Nah? so one i will add so for uh, n3 7 for n4 8 for n5 3 plus 1 that is 4 that's it we have constructed the table okay yes. so uh, so uh, i think four mark question uh, has been asked in gate i do not remember the year i think 2010 or something so first was they they want you to fill the table two three were given and, uh, and one or two they want to they want you to fill you have filled everybody everyone and next question was uh, n2 to n3 this has been decreased to two okay and now mm -hmm. they want us to find distance vector new distance vector of n3 Mm -hmm. so that is very simple so now you, you can do by common sense also and mm -hmm. another is you do by proper method so n3 will receive distance vector from which n2 and n4 so you just copy them out so this has come from n2 oops uh, n3 will receive from n4 now nah? mm -hmm. So this is from N2 and this is from N4. So N2, N3 cost, you write it. N2, N3 cost is now 2 and N3, N4 cost is 2. So now, now what we are going to do is uh, N3 will make it stable now. Okay. So what values uh, it will add? so let me show you so 2 plus 1 3 and 8 plus 2 10 so minimum is 3 so finally minimum value is 3 next 2 plus 0 7 plus 2 so 2 is the minimum value and 3 to n3 that will be 0 for sure uh, 7 plus 2 9 2 plus 0 so 2 and then 3 plus 2 and 4 plus 2 so 5 is the minimum so 3 2 0 2 5 so simple final answer will be 3 2 0 2 5 this is the way uh, this is the answer are you getting it very simple question very simple any doubt yeah this final is actually n3 also which we uh -huh, n3 table n3 table so i have told you uh, uh, dist find distance vector of n3 awesome. so no need to do any kind of a problem just copy paste n2 and n4 and then uh, you just put the values add them and get the answer that is very simple okay so these are the type of question and another uh, first disadvantage is we have to give n minus one round to get final table <coughs> and another disadvantage is let me tell you that also take the snapshot okay so another disadvantage is count to infinity problem they have directly asked count to infinity problem is related to which uh, protocol you will say uh, which routing algorithm you will say it is related to dvr very simple question okay 
yes so what count and shield problem is saying so first of all i will clear the basic concept basic thing is bad news bad news spread slowly and good news spread fast so they are talking about ideal scenario in real life bad news spread very fast but good news spread very slowly but here uh, the ideal scenario is there that means bad news will spread very slowly but good news will spread very fast let me tell you that what they means for example a b c and d there are four routers b to c coast is one c to d coast is one a and b are not connected initially or you can say a, a a failed or their path failed whatever may be the reason they are not connected and I, i will try to make a partial table i will not make full table because we for in full table we have to add four entries na distance vector will contain four four entries so just to save the time i will do just one entry and i will talk only about a okay so for b c d total four entries we have to make but we will not make this we will make only entry for a okay so what uh, b b will make for a infinity c entry well c will make entry for a as infinity and d also infinity because uh, uh, distance is not there b c d entry i am not making i am just making entry for a now assume after some time a and b got connected so let me copy this out after some time a and b got connected and their coast is one so who will get to know about a very first obviously its neighbor b so it will make the value to be 1 okay so how how it will make the value 1 let me show you that also so a will a will send its table saying uh, my coast is 0 uh, a to a coast will be 0 but 1 will be added so 0 plus 1 directly i am writing so 1 1 is coming from here and uh, c will exchange its table so infinity plus 1 that will be infinity so 1 and infinity which is smaller 1 is smaller obviously 1 and infinity which is smaller 1 is smaller so b will make the entry of a as 1 mm. and it out here no no okay so now uh, we have made entry for b to be 1 now c and d are remaining for c c will get table from where b and d both will give value infinity mm -hmm. because in, in the next round we will take the updated value no in the previous round uh, we will take infinity only so finally infinity infinity that is infinity only we have infinity here no problem mm -hmm. so now c will put infinity here for the d d will receive table from c only it will not receive table from anyone else so infinity only so no change now what we will say uh, now this one so now uh, b will receive table from a and c so let me do it again no problem so it will receive one and from here it is going to receive infinity so one and infinity small is one one is already there so now this one will be given to c and d will send infinity and it has send one so which is minimum so oh, sorry two. it 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 will send two na two because bc coast is one so one was this one plus one that is two any doubt understood sir ah so 2 so final value will be here 2 okay ha ah, and it will send this infinity same infinity to d so it will get infinity as the answer are you getting it same infinity it will get so it will get infinity next in the next round what we are going to say it will get 1 from here and it will receive 3 from here c will send 2 2 plus 1 that is 3 are you getting it mm -hmm. so it will get one only now this one will, will will be send here and from here it will get infinity so finally value will be 2 uh, only okay 1 uh, plus 1 2 it will send 2 and here it will get infinity so answer will be 2 any doubt here Uh, this three part I didn't understand, sir. Okay, three part. So uh, see this. So initially uh, value was two, na? Mm -hmm. C. So C to B coast is one. Mm -hmm. So two plus one three. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, we. Uh, so I have just bypassed there. Infinity plus one was infinity. That's why I was saying on sending only infinity. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I will say infinity plus one. That is only infinity. Okay. Yes, 
Uh, so it will send three and it will send one. So final answer will be one. Now it will send two. Why two? Because one plus one two, and it has sent infinity. So minimum is two. So you have taken two. Now it will send what three here because two plus one CD cost is one now. So two plus one that is three. So finally it will make three. Okay, so it will cut this infinity and make the value three. Yes, sir. Any doubt here? No, yeah. So in three rounds, so this was round one. This is round two. This is round three. So in three rounds, we have completed this table properly. One, two, three value we have got it in three rounds. Now, uh, so this was good news. Why it was good news? Because A and B were not connected, but now they have got connected. That's why we have got this answer. So this was good news, no? Earlier cost was infinity, but now we have made it one, two, and three, and so on. So it is not count to infinity problem. Actually, it is very simple. We have got this idea. So good news spread faster, very easily. Now tell me about bad news. How bad news will look like? Let me tell you that also. So what I will say. Let me copy this out. So A B C D one. Okay. So for A entry, so here it will be zero. It will here it will be one. Here it will be two. Here it will be three. Mm. I think uh, it's obvious. Please let me know if you have any doubt. No, sir. And and we will not consider on B C and D because it is our no use. So let us assume that uh, this path goes down. So uh, now what uh, we will get? So A will not send table to B. Mm. Okay. So directly, indirectly, I can imagine that uh, we have got infinity from A side. Yes. Actually, since link is down, A will not send the table. Mm. So, but I am assuming that it has an infinity. One and the same thing, na? Yeah, not yeah, sending the table or time. sending infinity. Yeah. One and the same thing. Mm. Ah. And uh, it will get infinity from here, and from here, what it will get three, because C cost is to two plus one three. Uh -huh. So B will make entry three. This is wrong. Why this is wrong? So B will think that according to me there is no path to A, but I think C have got a route which which might take me to A, and that cost is three. Like uh -huh. this B is thinking. Okay, but it is wrong thinking. But no way out. The algorithm is looking like that only. So infinity and three. We have got here three. Okay. So now here, uh, what uh, what it will send here? It will send two here. Okay, and it will send four here. So it will get two same, and okay. it will send this two here. So it will get uh, sorry three. It will send now. So it will get three here. Two plus one that is three. Any doubt? No, no, sir. So three, two, three. We have got it. Now, now see the next phase. So in the next phase, what we will get? Uh, three. It will send three here. Okay. So we have got here three now. So it will send here three, and uh, it it will. It send will four, uh, three and the path rate. Ha 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 ha. Sorry. Three plus one that is four. Mm. Okay. It will send four here. And uh, from here, it will get four. From D also, it will get four. I'm talking about C. Yes, sir. Yes. C will get three here, uh, three and three, so four and four. So finally, it will get four. Hmm. Okay. Ha. Uh, and B, B, what it will get? So initially it was two. So it will get hmm, four plus one. Four plus one that is five. So it will get five, okay. And uh, what D will get? Four uh, plus one that is five, okay. So four plus one that is five. So it will get five. So five four five is my answer. Now in the next phase, yes, please uh, tell me if you are facing any difficulty. I I understood, sir. Okay, okay. Then five four five is our answer. Then what will happen? So this five. Uh, it will send here. It will be made six, and here it will send five plus one, that is six. So it will get six. And when it will send here, it will send seven. So you will made it seven. And uh, this six, 
will go here it will make 7 so finally it will be updated to 7 and so on so i'm not going into details it will simply waste our time so the basic fact is that it will keep on increasing increasing slowly and finally they will become infinity mm -hmm. so this is known as count to infinity problem so count to infinity problem arises just because uh, b was getting confused that to according to me there is no path to a but c might have got a path to a that was the biggest confusion which was creating a problem and this confusion goes on and on and on and finally they will become infinity okay mm -hmm. yes. mm. okay so uh, so this is a very big problem in distance vector routing in gate no question have been asked they have just asked this question count to infinity problem is related to dvr that is distance vector routing yes. okay mm. and now i will tell you a very small solution to count to infinity problem let me tell you that also take the snapshot okay so a solution to count to infinity problem they can ask you this also solution is very simple why confusion started a b c and d so one 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 this goes down so uh, initially values were 1, 2 and 3 and here 0 for A and when this link goes down it become infinity okay and, and how confusion started when C sent the table then B got a false impression that C has find a route to A so C should not send table rather C should send the table but it will not send entry for a if c send infinity for a entry so this is a mark of respect and c is saying that uh, c is saying to be you are my guru i came to know about a from you only so i cannot teach you so it's mark of respect and i am sending infinity to you so the moment it's an infinity so here it will remain infinity only okay because uh, see this uh, if there was some entry here one now no n nothing is came from here and see sending infinity here so it will get infinity yes sir. okay uh, and uh, uh, okay and uh, here we have two and here we have three so in the next round this infinity will go here mm -hmm. and this uh, so uh, d d will also send infinity now because d came to know about a from c only d does mm -hmm. not have any idea so it will send infinity it will send infinity so finally it will become infinity okay and lastly it will send this infinity to this so finally it will become infinity mm -hmm. so very fastly we have done this mm. are you getting it so solution yeah. to count infinity problem is sending this so this is known as split horizon technique mm. split horizon technique okay so what split horizon technique is saying so whenever you are uh, next part is same so see this uh, uh, so for example i'm, I'm just making a route uh, uh, for example um, okay let me make distance vector for b okay distance vector for b to coast next so to a b c and d so to a coast is say initially it, it was it was one now so one zero then c it will be one and for d it will be two okay so next so for a a coast is one so next is a b next is b c next is c and for d and uh, next is c <coughs> so when b is sending this distance vector to c it will send these two fields as infinity because next is c next c means b will say c is my guru for c and d entry so i will put values infinity here okay so whenever next part is same or uh, next part is c then when b sending the uh, table to c it will put values as infinity and here next part is a so when b is sending table to a it will make this entry as infinity are you getting it so let 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 me show you that 
so i will say b table to a so it will put here infinity okay it will send this to a these two are not sent na only in a distance vector is sent so it will send infinity to a because as a mark of respect because next was a na so a, b came to a from a only so it will send infinity hmm. now b table to c b to c so here it will put infinity and infinity because uh, as a mark of respect b came to know about c and d from c only so it will put here infinity and it will send this distance vector to c mm. okay this is split horizon that's it so it is very simple technique so entire confusion started just because c sent the table to b saying that i have got a root to a which was the entire confusion which was the root of confusion so we have get rid of this confusion by sending infinity so we will not send the number we will send the infinity okay so this is known as split horizon so they can ask a simple question regarding split horizon and all okay so uh, let me show you one example take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay so a uh, very simple uh, 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 you can say i am making a a uh, scenario so they can ask this type of question so this is a this is p this is c this is d so let us suppose 111 uh, i am just adding 111 just to save the time i can give some numbers also so now they will ask according to split horizon distance vector sent by b to a and c okay according to Split horizon distance vector sent by B to A and C. So what it will send? So first of all, we will make distance vector of B to cos ten next A B C D zero B A one next is A C one next is C D. Two, next whatever you want, you can take either uh, A or C. So it's your choice. Okay, so I am taking say A. If this is the scenario, then uh, this B obviously we will get two answers. Okay, so we will get two answers. So we 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 want to get rid of it. Let us take this two. Uh huh. Okay, so now B to A cost will be two. Next is A. So now for D, two. Next will be C. There is no confusion now. Okay, so we have got this, and uh, according to split horizon, uh, sent to uh, from B to A and C. So when this distance vector is sent to A, what it will send? B to A, so this will become infinity. Rest other is same. So infinity is zero one two. It will be sent to A. And distance vector to C. Hmm. I will copy so this. To A, um, become infinity, sir. Uh, next is A, na. Hmm. Next A means B has come to know about A from A only. Hmm. so that's why it will send infinity mm. and for here what we will say uh, next is c next c means b has come to know about c from c and from for d also it has come to know about from c only b came to know about d from c only see this path is this mm. so that's why here we have the next to be c so uh, it will send this infinity and infinity so 2 0 infinity infinity it will be sent to c any doubt here correct sir okay so that's it so this is all about split horizon technique
the last table is actually b um a, mm-hmm. the last table table 3 table 1 is uh-huh. actually b from b mm-hmm. and the uh-huh. table uh-huh. is b uh-huh. a ha uh-huh. so uh, b table this is b's table hmm okay and, and this is b to c right sir and this is b to a oh, okay sir okay yes so you can take snapshot or something i will jump to the next slide done sir okay <coughs> hmm sir so nobody is there so, in the class still you take uh, just a second Yeah, please. Uh, nobody is there. Eh? If nobody is there in the class, still the class will go on, sir. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Mm. And we have to complete the syllabus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How did I give you holiday? I was thinking. Everybody was thinking of holiday. No, no, no. How do I call up the class for you so that you can take rest? Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no problem. Uh, but we have to complete the syllabus now. It it is already lagging behind. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, we have discussed two uh, two disadvantages of distance vector routing. First was count to infinity problem, and convergence is very slow. So let me write write these again. Disadvantages of distance vector routing. one was count to infinity problem second was convergence is very slow okay and uh, that is n minus 1 steps are needed yes sir and the last disadvantage is loop problem what is loop problem this count to infinity problem will create the loop problem for example a b c and d so this goes down b c d uh-huh. keep going so yeah infinity. yeah so, yes so we we have explained this count to infinity now uh-huh. assume that c has got a packet which it want to transfer to a so c will send packet to b and b will send packet to c C will send packet to B, B will send packet to C, and so on. So this is nothing but a loop problem, because they will keep on sending the packet to one another because they might think that they have got the path or they have got the path, and so on. So yes. packet will be in loop. That is another problem. Yes. Okay. So that's it. So this is all about DVR. Now we are going to start LSR or link state routing. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Okay. LSR. link state routing so what link state routing is saying so uh, first is that each router should have complete knowledge about topology of the network each router must have complete knowledge of topology of the network okay so for example i will take the same same scenario d c b a 2 3 11 1 same same example so in lsr what we are saying in dvr what uh, what we were doing distance about all the routers or you can say information about all the routers is sent to neighbors only so a will receive distance vector from d and b but in lsr what we are doing is information about neighbors is sent to each and every router so here uh, uh, a will make a special packet and it will send this packet it will broadcast the packet to b Uh, to b also d also and c so everyone will receive packet from a and that packet will contain distances to the neighbor or information about the neighbor so a neighbor is d and b so uh, information about these two neighbors will be given to all the routers in the network 
Okay, this is the basic difference between DVR and LSR. In DVR, information about all the routers is given only to neighbors. Let me write it. This is a very important point. In DVR, info about all routers is given to neighbors only LSR info about only neighbors is given to all the routers this is the basic difference so you can remember it like this just by common sense dvr is saying information about all the routers so whatever it has learned it will tell all these things to neighbors only so that means you can imagine by real life scenarios like the person which who is having a lot of knowledge that will speak very less so same scenario lot of knowledge that means information about all the routers it will be given to only neighbors LSR information about only neighbors is given to all the routers so the person which is having very less knowledge he will keep on speaking and speaking he will keep on saying I know this I know that and so on so information about only neighbors so uh, it uh, routers having very less information that means only about neighbors and it will send to all the routers that is LSR so DVR is saying information about all the routers is given only to the neighbors and LSR is saying information about only neighbors is given to all the routers. Mm -hmm. Any doubt here? No, that's right, sir. Okay. So now according to LSR, A, A, will, uh, A will send uh, this. So uh, to D, cost is 1. To B, cost is 2. So this information, only this information is given to all the routers. So it will send to D and B and D will send it to C. B will also send to C. Finally, C will come to know about A and so on. So A information is given to all the routers. Similarly, B will make a, uh, you can say a packet. It will send to all the all the neighbor, uh, all the the routers. Okay, so broadcasting. Uh, so broadcasting will be done here. Okay, so... <clears throat> So, uh, uh, so here, let me show you how uh, you can say A, A, A will think. So, A knows about the neighbors. I will tell you about how it come to know and so on, step by step. So, initially, I am just telling you that 1 and 2. So, A has got this idea, B and D. They are the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Now, when it receives the packet from uh, D, when it has received the packet from D, now it will come to know that C is neighbor of D and the cost is 11 because D will send this now and D will also send that B is my neighbor and cost is 7 so A come to know about it because D has sent uh, its table so it has come to know about this and when it receives the table from B so it come to know that B to C cost is 3 are you getting it? so now in A's mind this entire topology of the network is there. Yes. Similarly, in B minds this network topology C also D also. So you can think like every router in the network is having a road map. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like uh, Google map, you are having a Google map. Everybody is having a Google map. So whenever packet arrives, it will check whatever is the small, uh, sh uh, shortest path and so on, and they can send the packet uh, whatever way they want. Okay, that is the basic difference between DVR and LSR. In DVR, this type of knowledge was not there. Okay, so they just know who is the next one. Hmm. But in LSR, this entire network topology is known to each and every router in the network. So they are having a map. So according to map, they can send the packet from whatever way they want. Okay. Hmm. Yes, so now I will tell you the basic procedure what is followed in LSR or link state routing. Take the snapshot, I will jump to the next slide. Okay. So there are five steps which we need to be followed. Step number one is discovering the neighbors. Let me discover neighbors. Discover neighbor. For discovering of neighbors, 
hello packet will be sent step number two so you just know the name we will not go into detail what hello packet look like and so on what is the format these are very big things and we really don't require for lsr you will uh, if you dive deep into it 1000 pages book is there so no need to follow that okay so we will just give you the idea that will be asked in gate only discover the neighbor for that we will use hello packet next is compute cost of each neighbor compute cost of each neighbor for that we have eco packet okay so for that we have eco packet this name itself will tell you hello packet whenever you say hello to anybody you you are discovering them that means they are present or not then eco packet eco i think you know na uh, sound eco that means uh, we, we send the sound and it come back we can find the distance okay so this eco mechanism is used in radar and so on many many devices okay yes so step number 2 is compute cost of each neighbor that is done by eco packet okay and step number 3 is make a packet containing all the information which you have learned make a packet containing all info which you have learned that means neighbors neighbor information whatever you have learned you will make a packet step number 4 send the packet to all the routers send it to all the routers so how you will send it to all the routers you will use broadcasting so for broadcasting what algorithm we are using here flooding you should know this they will ask this question so in lsr uh, uh, you can say routing table is uh, sent to all the routers for that which algorithm is used flooding is used step number 5 finally uh, 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 see this. A will receive packet from C, B, and D. Okay. B will receive packet from A, D, C. Ev everywhere. So once this A receive packet from B, C, and D, everyone, then it will apply Dijkstra's algorithm to find the uh, sing a single source shortest path. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, compute cost using Dijkstra's algorithm. Mm -hmm. Step number five is compute cost using Dijkstra's algorithm. That is single source shortest path. So these are the five steps which we are going to use. So now let me tell you how packets look like. Take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done, sir. Okay. So for example, if A is sending the packet, then A IP address will be there. Then we will have sequence number. then we will have age and then we will have entries so a entry will be b and d na d1 and b2 d1 b2 this is the packet for a similarly every every uh, every router will make a packet now question arises what is this sequence number and what is this age field let me tell you that so i have told you that uh, we are going to use flooding hmm so in flooding uh, in broadcasting algorithm i have told you there will be a loop so to to avoid loop there were three uh, strategies sequence number i have told you na and next was uh, time to live till you can add and the third was spanning tree there were three uh, solutions to avoid the loop so to avoid the loop we have used the sequence number to avoid loop sequence number field is added because if sequence number is not there then this router will receive the packet it will send to this this will send to this this will send to this so they will keep on sending the pa packet to one another that is not good so uh, when router will forward the packet it will store the sequence number of that packet and when this router receive the packet again it will say i have already forwarded it so i will not forward it again it will drop the packet okay so this is all about sequence number and uh, this is one of the advantage that means to avoid loop sequence number is added
Another advantage of adding sequence number is let me tell you that also. So for example, this is router. Okay. R1, R2. So when first packet was sent, okay, information about uh, the numbers R1 is sending and it sent to, through this path. Obviously, it will take some time to reach R2. And in between that, it has made another packet. So uh, I have told you now, they are adaptive algorithms. Adaptive means they will adapt uh, through changes. So R1 has got some idea that some router has failed and so on. So it will make another packet and uh, it sent from this route. Okay. So now what happened? R2 has received the packet. So this is sequence number one and this is sequence number two. So sequence number two arrive before sequence number one. So R2 will come to know uh, since uh, sequence number one is coming after sequence number two if sequence number is not there then r2 will come to know whatever has come later that is the latest packet so i should remember that but actually this is the latest and this is not latest mm -hmm. so packet which is arriving last it is not guarantee that it is latest it might be a stale packet stale means passy that means it mm -hmm. is older packet. okay so to get rid of it we have used the sequence number field are you getting it Yes. So, it might be the case that uh, uh, you can say stale packet arrive after, okay, and new packet arrive first. So, you have to count the new packet. You should uh, delete that stale packet, but you will keep stale packet assuming that it is a new packet, which is wrong idea. So, for that mm -hmm. also, we have used the sequence number. Mm -hmm. So, I hope you have got it. So, two advantages of sequence number. What is this age field? Age field is also very simple. So uh, see this for uh, so router will make entry. So for example, this uh, R two, R two will make entry that R one sequence number. So router and sequence number. Roughly, I am writing router R one and sequence number is say one zero uh, yeah one thirty one thirty the sequence number latest which it has it has received. Then it will it will expect sequence number one thirty one then one thirty two then one thirty three and so on. Let us suppose one thirty one came. So latest entry R1, 131 it will keep. Okay. Now assume uh, there is some error in the transmission or something like that. This 131 becomes 10. Yes, some, some problem has occurred. So now what it will, are you getting it now? So there is some error in the transmission. So this 131 becomes 10. So the moment it becomes 10, so R1 will receive uh, <coughs> another packet and uh, it uh, r2 has received packet from r1 and sequence number is 10 mm -hmm. okay so it will discard the packet it will say i have received 131 so i am expecting 132 but you are sending me 10 so i will discard it so next mm -hmm. packet it, it will be say 11 12 13 14 and so on so it will keep on rejecting the packets are you getting it so mm -hmm. better is we have a age field so whenever there is an entry from r1 so age we will keep age is say 50 so with every one second this age will keep on decreasing when age becomes zero we will delete this entry so whatever entry will come now forget about sequence number the sequence number might be 2 3 4 10 15 whatever the sequence number you will accept that sequence number assuming it is the latest packet okay so this is the basic uh, use of age. So anyway, I have just given you idea. So sequence number, they will ask uh, to avoid the loop problem and so on. And age is used because uh, with each, uh, you can say clock tick or with each uh, second, this age field will keep on decreasing. When age becomes zero, entry will be deleted. So why this entry is deleted? So that we have got a, uh, whatever sequence number we will get, that will be the latest one. So if sequence number get corrupted, so solution is given by age. So uh, this is the simplest way. If sequence number got corrupted, then solution is given by age. That is the basic idea. Okay. So I have given you idea about age as well as sequence number. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. 
so otherwise we will jump to the next topic any uh, doubt here the sequence number is given by the age so solution is given by the age ha uh ha -huh, solution if sequence number got corrupted then solution is given by the age yes because age will keep on decrementing when age will become zero entry will be deleted that's it yes sir mm -hmm. that's okay so that's it so now uh, i will give you very important differences between dvr and lsr they have been asked in gate many times take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide done okay yes, sir. so here we will write dvr and here we will write lsr so it was invented in 1980 and it was developed in 1990 after 10 years so lsr is more advanced than dvr okay so uh, what was the basic point in dvr information about every router hmm. info about every router is given to neighbors only but here info about neighbors is given to every router that is the basic difference now from here i will develop many other uh, you can say uh, differences so here broadcasting is done no broadcasting is not done you are just sending data to the neighbors here we are using broadcasting so now since broadcasting is done so which algorithm is used for broadcasting there are many algorithms we are using flooding okay next so bandwidth requirement obviously bandwidth requirement is less here but here it is more why because of broadcasting so from here only i am developing the points hmm. okay so uh, in dvr complete knowledge of the network no complete knowledge of network topology no we do not have complete knowledge but here we have complete knowledge okay so it is based on which algorithm bellman ford and it is based on dijkstra's next so it converges very slowly n minus 1 steps or n minus 1 rounds but here only one round once you got it you will simply apply it extras and you will get the answer so converges fastly next so a count infinity problem is there and here count to infinity problem is not there next uh, algorithm uh, protocol rip routing information protocol and here we have open shortest path first ospf is the protocol which is implementing lsr next calculations are uh, calculation which is having more calculations so you have to apply dijkstra's algorithm on each and every node okay each and every node is calculating shortest path so here calculation is very high but here calculation is less so i hope you have got it any doubt here understood sir uh, sir it is um, dsp where 9.9 points sir huh? rip and ospf yes sir rip is routing information protocol ospf is open shortest path first yeah we discussed that sir ha uh ha -huh, we have discussed that yes okay so that's it so here good news is that our network layer is completed now 
and now we are going to start the transport layer so you have taken the snapshot okay yes so uh, next is transport layer so at transport layer we have to study two protocols UDP user datagram protocol and TCP transmission control protocol okay so we are going to study two protocols and uh, a transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery na DLL is responsible for node to node delivery network layer is responsible for host to host delivery and transport layer is for process to process delivery process to process or end to end so just like that sender and receiver yes sir air to air dll head to head dll head to head dll head to head network but end to end delivery is not sufficient we have to do process to process delivery that is done by transport okay mm -hmm. ah. so for process to process delivery that means uh, we need address of process because without address how we will transfer the data or how uh, process will receive so for that we have to have address for each and every process that is known as port address let me tell you that take a snapshot That's Hmm. So to uniquely identify process, we have port address. Okay, so port address is the address given to each process. Port address is given to each process but problem is that this port address can be repeated IP address cannot be repeated but port address can be repeated port address can be repeated so now uh, but within each machine it can't be repeated okay so for example this is a computer in this computer we have say five pro six processes running so each and every process will have a unique port address for example i have given it five two one six three this is the port address given to this another computer we can have a process it also can have five two one six three okay but uh, within same computer it cannot be repeated so now question arises how can i recognize this process uniquely in the internet obviously i cannot from port address i cannot because the same port address can be given to another process to another machine so first of all i should reach this machine after reaching this machine i can reach this process so to reach this machine i will use ip to reach this process i will use port address so if i am having ip and port address combination then I can uh, recognize any process in internet uniquely and that is known as socket address so let me write it to identify any process in internet uniquely we have socket address so what is socket address socket address is ip plus port address so ip and port address combination is together known as socket address any doubt here no sir okay 
take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide done sir okay so mostly in internet processes whatever they are communicating they are generally follow client server model okay mm -hmm. processes generally follow client server model that means client will request server and server will give reply to client okay so client will uh, uh, expect some services and server will give those services okay so for example uh, we can take uh, any example like uh, uh, say for example um, we can have a day time server okay which will give us idea about day, what is the exact day and time today so let us assume we have a day time server okay so we have a computer in that computer we have a server and please do not say server is a computer server is a process okay so uh, first of all i will clear this fact it is a process it is a process not a computer ha uh, running on a machine okay so your computer can become a server you just install a server process to it that's it so it is a process running on a machine and it is not a computer and it's not a computer so this is a machine in this machine this is daytime server i have installed so it will keep on waiting for client request so this is another machine in that machine we have a daytime client so daytime client will send request to daytime server regarding what is day and time request daytime and the server will give the reply what is the current day and time so i am i have used the word daytime client and here i have used the word a uh, daytime server so who is making the connection daytime client is making the connection with daytime server so daytime client should know the port address of daytime server if it does not know the port address then obviously connection cannot be made so this is our assumption that daytime client know the uh, daytime server port address so how it knows so they have uh, typically they have same name daytime server to query daytime server we should have a daytime client so what is daytime client we have written a code piece of code and in that piece of code we will write the port address of daytime server and let me tell you that port address of port address of daytime server is 13 so this 13 number will be uh, embedded in the code of daytime client so daytime client will request daytime server and daytime server will give reply hmm. so since daytime client is also a process so how it will start or what port address it will get it will get ephemeral or temporary port number this question has been asked what is ephemeral ephemeral or you can say temporary port number so this is the convention that client will start with ephemeral or temporary port number but server will always start with well known port number okay so server will start with well known port number that is 13 well known port number is given to it that is 13 and why server will start with well known port number because if server start with ephemeral or temporary port number how client will come to know what is the port number of server it will never know so it's better that it will start with a well known port number that is say 13 or you can say permanent port number just like permanent ip addresses so here it will have a permanent port number that is 13 so if you are making a daytime server you are making code so in that code you you will come to know that uh, you have to give port address as 13 okay mm -hmm. so whenever daytime server will start it will request operating system regarding give me port address as 13 so os will give it to give the same port address to uh, this daytime server we are not doing all these things operating system itself will do all these mm -hmm. things okay and whenever daytime client will start it will start with ephemeral or temporary port number why because no one is coming to him for connection 
okay it is requesting the daytime sir class server so now when it is requesting obviously it is sending its own port address to the server and the, uh, to, to the same uh, address uh, the server will send uh, server will send the reply okay for example uh, you you want to give letter to say uh, chief minister so obviously uh, chief uh, you know the address of chief minister because he is living on a well known house which is given by him uh, which is given to him by the government but obviously chief minister does not know your house you might be at rent you are uh, living at one place you are shifting to another place and next time you are shifting to another place so obviously he do, do not know your address so whenever you are sending letter to him so you will put your own address so he will reply to your address only so same is the scenario here daytime client will start with ephemeral or temporary port number it will send its own port address port number in the packet the request packet and daytime server will send reply uh, uh, for, uh, uh, and it will get the port address from the time client from the same packet itself okay so that is the general scenario which is followed so same ephemeral port number for, for example i give here 52136 so now the same port number can be given to some other client also no need to worry okay yes sir so how the server will identify because from ip address obviously from this machine we will have some other ip address and if i make another machine which is having uh, some other daytime client so this machine will be having another ip address ip address cannot be same na so from ip address the server will come to know so directly directly socket address from socket address it will come to know okay socket address is combination of ip address as well as port address port address okay so you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide and i will tell you few more points about port addresses yes sir okay so port address is of 16 bits port address is of 16 bits and ip is of 32 bits so socket address will be of 16 plus 32 that is 48 bits any doubt here yes no, sir so this question has been asked socket address is of 48 bits why because ip is of 32 port address is of 16 so total number of port addresses possible will be so total port addresses that will be 0 to 2 power 16 minus 1 that is 0 to 65535 and doubt here no sir so how these are divided let me tell you that so from 0 to 1023 they are known as well known port numbers from 1024 to 49151 these are known as registered port numbers from 49152 to 65535 these are known as random or ephemeral or temporary port numbers okay so these are you, you should know the range this range can be asked from 0 to 1023 well known port number 1024 to 49151 registered port numbers 49152265535 that is random or ephemeral or temporary port number now who has decided this range and all this has been decided by iana internet assigned numbers authority internet assigned numbers authority so register so well known port numbers they are controlled by iana only and uh, 1024249154915 that is registered port numbers so they can be registered with iana okay if you want then you can register that with iana and 49152265535 these are random or ephemeral port numbers okay it is iana is internet internet signed numbers authority ha ah, sir internet assigned numbers authority mm -hmm. okay so i think you have got it so 
you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay so at the sender side what transport layer is doing this is the transport layer so this is the protocol at transport layer this protocol can be the tcp or udp so what tcp is doing at sender side so there are many application layer processes all of them are sending data to transport layer that is tcp tcp will put the port address and so on and it will send this packet or segment to ip network layer and this is the ip here so this is sending data to ip now this ip will send to the internet and so on so what we are doing here multiple inputs and one output this is done at sender side and it is nothing but multiplexing so at sender side transport layer protocol is doing multiplexing because multiple application layer processes are sending data to transport layer protocol and this transport layer protocol is sending all the data to network layer only are you getting it multiple input and one output that is multiplexing at receiver side exactly opposite is done okay exactly opposite so let me copy this okay uh, actually copy will waste our time it's better i should make it because i have to change the arrows network layer will receive and it will forward it to transport layer and transport layer will forward to the respective process after seeing the port port address according to port address it will send the packet to respective application layer process okay so what we are doing here one input and many output that is what demultiplexing so this is sender side and this is receiver side at receiver side demultiplexing is done at sender side multiplexing is done okay yes so you can take uh, this question has been asked in gate mm -hmm. yes so you can take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide okay so now we are going to start the first protocol that is udp user datagram protocol of that of transport layer yeah yeah transport layer so now we are going to study the first protocol of transport layer let me write it first protocol of tl transport layer so we have uh, talked about it many times in the previous lectures also udp is we will simply revise it udp is unreliable and connectionless protocol unreliable and connectionless protocol okay so and uh, user can send only that amount of data which can fit in user one user datagram that means udp cannot do chopping and all udp can't do chopping that is we can send only that amount of data which can fit in one user datagram what is user datagram packet at transport layer if udp is used okay datagram is packet at network layer frame is packet at data link layer you should know all these things and packet at transport layer if tcp is used segment okay so packet name you should know so should i write it or uh, you know all these things no no sir no sir no sir hmm okay so you we can't do chopping that is we can send only that amount of data which can fit in one user datagram so now i will simply tell you how udp header look like take the snapshot i will jump to the next slide thank you okay so they have asked such questions so try to remember it udp header is of 8 bytes only 
okay so you you should know ethernet header header and trailer header and trailer both because it it was at uh, data link layer trailer was of only 4 bytes and header was of 14 bytes so mm -hmm. total 18 bytes overhead na mm -hmm. so minimum data 46 and maximum data 1500 so 1518 was the maximum ethernet frame size and 46 plus 18 that is 64 byte was the minimum ethernet frame ethernet frame size you should know these effects on tips this should be on your fingers very very important points and then we have studied uh, your uh, ip header so ip header was minimum 20 maximum 60 so uh, 40 byte options can be added okay. now we are studying udp header UDP header is fixed that is 8 bytes only mm. how these 8 bytes look like let me tell you that also source port number destination port number that is for sure without source and destination we cannot do anything na? transport layer will add port number so source port number destination port number 16 16 bits yes. so uh, 4 bytes you have uh, here ok is next is total length field and next is checksum okay so total length is 16 checksum is also 16 so 4 byte here total 8 byte header very simple header nothing is there mm -hmm. so the ip header was very big okay yes, but sir. this header is very small only four entries sp and dp and total length and checksum yes sir okay and i have to see this in the previous slide i have told you that uh, udp is unreliable but mm -hmm. here i have added checksum so in IP, I have told you that checksum was for header only, but here this checksum is for header and data both. Mm -hmm. But why this is unreliable? Unreliable because this checksum is optional. You can skip it. If you are skipping it, you will put all ones. If you put all ones, uh, then checksum is optional. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. So all 16 ones. If all 16 ones, then it is optional. Okay. Well, me, uh, all 16 ones means you are not using the checksum field. All mm -hmm. 16 ones, not use. Not This means that you are not using the checksum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, so that's why I am saying that uh, uh, checksum is for header and data both, but it is optional. So since this is a field, so you cannot skip this field. So if you want to skip it, you will add all 16 ones. So that means you are not using checksum. Yes. I think you have got it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now source port number, I think I should not explain. Destination port number, I should not explain. That is very simple. We have just done it. So we are left with only one field. That is total length field. Let me tell you that also. Take this now. And checksum we have already done. Header and data, yes. it is optional. All 16 ones, that means we are not using. So total length, uh, take the snapshot. <coughs> so now I am going to tell you about total length. As the name says, total length means header plus data. So total length field is of 16 bits. So maximum number in 16 bit is 2 power 16 minus 1, 65535. Five. So you might say that maximum size of user datagram is 65535 why because total length field of 16 bits but no why no because user datagram will be encapsulated in uh, datagram that means ip head uh, ip packet so user datagram this is your user datagram this will be put it in so uh, header network so this entire thing will be datagram And datagram maximum size is 65535. Five. So minimum header is of 20. So user, user datagram will be of 65535 five minus 20, 65515. So do not do this kind of mistake in gate. Okay. So maximum size is 65515. Five. Any doubt yes, here? Sir. No. Ah, because user datagram will be encapsulated in datagram. Yes, now sir. datagram can have maximum data of 65515 so obviously maximum size of user datagram will be 65515 now question will be maximum data 
inside user data graph. These all questions have been asked in gate. Mm -hmm. Maximum data in user data graph, or you can say payload. So 65515. Header is of 8 bits, 8 bytes. So 65515 minus 8, it comes out to be 65506. Calculation is okay, na? Huh? 65506 bytes. Okay. That is the maximum data or maximum payload in user data graph. Any doubt here? 65507 or so. This is our zero seven. Ah ha 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 ha. Take care. Yes, six five five zero seven bytes. <coughs> okay. Yes. So uh, take the snapshot. I will jump to the next slide. Done, okay. So uh, next is. So uh, if UDP is used, so uh, <coughs> see this. So, so, uh, client side, I have told you now client and server model. So for client, uh, we will have input queue uh, and output queue. Input queue means whatever uh, data is coming from server, it will come to client input queue. And whatever data is going uh, out of the client, that will be in output queue. Okay, similarly server, input queue and output queue. Okay. So cl both client and server will have a queue associated with them. Input queue in which data from server will come and stored here. Because client cannot consume the data immediately. Server data will come and it will be stored in input queue. One by one packets uh, or user data graph will be consumed by the client process. Similarly, when client want to send user data graph, it will send to output queue and from here UDP will pick those packets and send it to the server. Okay, so each and every client and server will have two queues associated with them input queue and output queue. Yes. Any doubt? No, sir. Yes, so when clients send packet to the server or user datagram to the server and server input queue has not yet been created by operating system. Queue is nothing but buffer, na? Input queue is nothing but a buffer only, output queue is nothing but buffer only, small piece of memory that will be allocated. So now assume client has sent user datagram to the server, but input queue has not yet been created. So obviously server cannot accept the packet and in that case, ICMP error message will be transferred that is destination unreachable. Mm. Okay, so obviously IP uh, network layer will drop the packet because it cannot be con uh, given to transport layer okay because server input queue has not been created so icmp error message will be sent so please write th this question has been asked in gate please write it mm -hmm. if client sent udp packet to server if client sent udp packet to server but memory is not allocated for input queue but memory is not allocated for input queue memory is not allocated for input queue of server memory is not allocated for input queue of server then network layer at server side then network layer at server side will send destination unreachable message to client process then network layer at server side will send destination unreachable message to client process. Okay. So destination unreachable bracket you can write ICMP. Okay. ICMP message is there. Na? Destination unreachable, port unreachable. I have told you many messages like that in ICMP. Hmm. 
so that is the case here okay so that's it time is up so we will wind up the class here itself in the next class we will start from uses of udp where it is used and these are very important uses which have been asked in gate many times okay mm -hmm. so uh, we will study these and then we will start the most important protocol that is tcp tcp is very important many question have been asked okay mm -hmm. so we will study that in the next class okay so i hope everything is clear so we will wind up the class here itself if you have any doubt you can ask me no sir okay then bye bye okay thank you